found in you love one another love one another yeah love one another that's what we'll do Hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're taking a look at an incredible gift. It's one that we can receive and give. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. And this month, we're talking about how trusting and following Jesus changes the way we treat others. So we can um live right. You seem distracted. I guess. Anything you want to talk about? No. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I did terrible on a test and I gotta retake it. I'm sorry, that's rough. And then my dog is kind of sick. Oh no. Yeah, and it's making me feel sad. Well, I can't make those things better, but maybe we can do something to take your mind off of it. Yeah? Ever seen a lava lamp? Lava? Not that kind. Oh, right. Lava lamp. I think my dad had one of those back in the dark ages. Yep. And we're going to create our very own lava lamp to brighten your day. All righty then. Let's make it. For our lava lamp experiment, you're going to need some things that are probably already in your kitchen. A glass jar, baking soda, white vinegar, and vegetable oil. Don't forget the food coloring. Always the food coloring. You'll also need a small, flat LED light like this one to make it extra cool. Where do we start? Step one, scoop several large spoonfuls of baking soda into the jar. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, one, two, three. Step two, pour vegetable oil into the glass jar and fill it most of the way up but leave a little space at the top. It's a lot of vegetable oil. Oh, this is a workout. Your turn. Okay. Where's our lava? Right here. Step three, pour vinegar into a separate container. All right. And then, squeeze some food coloring into it. How much? Lots. About 15 to 20 drops. That'll do. What's next? Step four. Turn on the LED light. But first, turn all the surrounding lights off. Perfect. Set the jar and the oil and the baking soda on top, just like this. Ready for the lava? You bet. One, two, three. So, when is it supposed to like start happening? Give it a second. You can already see the bubbles going up. It's very calming. I still feel a little sad, but not quite so spun up. Very comforting. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today we're in the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians is one of the 21 letters in the New Testament. The leaders of the early church wanted to teach Jesus followers what was true, and they often wrote letters to do that. The Apostle Paul sent several of these letters to the believers in the church at Corinth. Paul had visited Corinth on his second missionary journey to tell people about Jesus. Later, Paul learned that some people were speaking against him. There were divisions in the Corinthian church. 
Paul wrote a letter to encourage them to get along and stay strong through hard times. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. During his ministry, the Apostle Paul traveled to dozens of towns and cities. People who like to do the math think Paul probably walked 10,000 miles during his journeys. You heard that right? 10,000! And you thought hiking two miles with your family was rough. But even though Paul visited so many places and started so many churches, he didn't forget the people he met, like the believers in the Corinthian church. Paul had spent more than a year in Corinth, and when he heard there was trouble among the Jesus followers, he sat down immediately to write them a letter. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Now, some Corinthian leaders were saying Paul wasn't really led by God's Spirit. They said Paul had faced so much trouble, it had proved that God wasn't really with Paul. What? You can bet Paul had some strong things to say about that. Give praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Father who gives tender love. All comfort comes from Him. He comforts us in all our troubles. Now we can comfort others when they are in trouble. We ourselves receive comfort from God. Paul couldn't wait to set the record straight. God is always with us no matter what we're going through. And God is the source of all comfort. We're gonna take a look at three words from these verses. First up, troubles. We live in a broken world and every single one of us experiences hard times. Maybe some kids at school have been saying mean things about you, or you're really struggling with reading, or maybe your pet guinea pig didn't make it. Truth is, we can't escape trouble right now. Jesus told his friends, in this world, you will have trouble, but be encouraged. I have won the battle over the world. This brings us to our second word, comfort. All comfort comes from God. We can first take comfort in knowing that in the end, God will make everything right. But let's be real. When you've just scraped your knee or had a fight with your brother, Sometimes it's hard to think about the big picture. So what does comfort look like? Well, you can start by remembering that God is with you, no matter what's going on, and ask for help. God, this really, really hurts. Please help me. Sometimes God will simply give you a sense of peace in the middle of it all. But often, God comforts us through other people. I'm sorry you got hurt. It's gonna be okay. We'll get you something to put on that right away. And here's the awesome thing. Just like God can work through other people to comfort you, God can use you to comfort others. As Paul told us, God comforts us in all our troubles. Now we can comfort others when they're in trouble. Not only is God with us in difficult times, but what we go through is not wasted. When we receive comfort, we learn how to give it to others. Comfort can look like a lot of things. You can comfort someone with your words. I'm really sorry that kid was mean to you. You can comfort someone by offering help. I'm gonna get us a snack and then I'll help you tell mom about it. And sometimes the best way to comfort someone is simply by being present with them, even if you aren't sure what to say or do. God doesn't promise that all our troubles will go away as soon as we ask, but God does promise to be with us and comfort us in the middle of hard situations. And once we've received comfort from God, then we have the amazing opportunity to see what others need and offer help, compassion, and comfort. The end. I never really thought about how all comfort comes from God. Yeah, like when my mom comforts me when I'm upset, it's because God gave her comfort to share. And then you get to pass that comfort on to others. 
it's an endless loop. Exactly! You're not wrong! So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? I'm so glad you asked. Well, God sees when you're in trouble and gives us comfort and compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's needs. Once we receive that compassion from God, we can offer it to others and help to meet their needs just like Jesus did. It's like a gift we can give. One way we can do that is with our words. Yep. You can start by reminding someone who needs comfort that God is always with them and that you're there for them too. You could even remind them of another time they overcame something really hard. You can also comfort others by offering help. Like if your friend is sick, you could give them a stuffed animal to hold. Or tell them a funny story. Or if your friend is hurt or really upset, you could even ask a grown-up to help. And don't forget, sometimes the best way to offer comfort and compassion is simply to be present with someone. Even if you don't know what else to do. Or what to say. I think you've got it. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> so here's the thing. Comfort others the way God comforts you. You need a little more calming lava lamp action? Yeah, that would be good. Green this time. Let's see what happens. All right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Look at that. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, see you, you next time. time. It's kind of still. She's got to wait for it. You got to wait for it.